Good evening and welcome to you all to this service of evening prayer on Thursday the 4th of June. For those of you who are watching at morning prayer this morning, you'll be very pleased to know that um, the mouse was rescued from the lounge and set free away from the garden and is hopefully living the high life somewhere now. It took me 20 minutes to catch it, which is probably a record for me. I'm usually a bit quicker catching mice, um, but it did actually get itself under the electric fire at one point. Um, so that uh, sort of held me up somewhat in trying to catch it. But as I say, the mouse is fine and is running around somewhere away from the house. And most importantly, away from the cat. Hopefully evening prayer will go without incident this evening. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. The song of God's chosen one. There shall come forth a, a shoot from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf, the lion and the fatling together with a little child to lead them. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and to set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 138 Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise to you. I will bow down towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. In that day that I called to you, you answered me. You put a new strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. For they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord. That great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he watches over the lowly. As for the proud, he regards them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will preserve me. You will stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand will save me. The Lord shall make good his purpose for me. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures for ever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures for ever. Lord our God, supreme over all things, look upon the humble and lowly and put new strength into our souls to complete your purpose for us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is a continuation from the book of Job, chapter 4. Then Eliphaz, the Temanite, answered, If one ventures a word with you, will you be offended? But who can keep from speaking? See, you have instructed many. You have strengthened the weak hands. Your words have supported those who were stumbling, and you have made firm the feeble knees. 
But now it has come to you and you are impatient. It touches you and you are dismayed. Is not your fear of God your confidence and the integrity of your ways your hope? Think now, who that was innocent ever perished? Or where were the upright cut off? As I have seen, those who plough iniquity and sow trouble reap the same. By the breath of God they perish, and by the blast of his anger they are consumed. The roar of the lion, the voice of the fierce lion, and the teeth of the young lions are broken. The strong lion perishes for lack of prey, and the whelps of the lioness are scattered. Now a word came stealing to me. My ear received a whisper of it. Amid thoughts and visions of the night, when deep sleep falls on mortals, dread came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones shake. A spirit glided past my face, the hair of my flesh bristled, it stood still, but I could not discern its appearance. A form was before my eyes, there was silence, then I heard a voice. Can mortals be righteous before God? Can human beings be pure before their maker? Even in his servants he puts no trust, and his angels he charges with error. How much more those that live in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, who are crushed like a moth. Between morning and evening they are destroyed. They perish forever without any regarding it. Their tent cord is plucked up within them, and they die devoid of wisdom. Here ends our first reading. The Great and Wonderful Canticle All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Great and wonderful are your deeds. Lord God the Almighty, just and true are your ways. O ruler of the nations, who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence. For your just dealings have been revealed to the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Our second reading is a continuation of the reading of the letter to the Romans, chapter 2, verses 17 to the end. But if you call yourself a Jew, and rely on the law, and boast of your relation to God, and know his will, and determine what is best, because you are instructed in the law, and if you are sure that you are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, a corrector of the foolish, a teacher of children, having in the law the embodiment of knowledge and truth, you then, that teach others, will you not teach yourself? While you preach against stealing, do you steal? You that forbid adultery, do you commit adultery? You that abhor idols, do you rob temples? You that boast in the law, do you dishonour God by breaking the law? For as it is written, the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Circumcision is, indeed, is of value if you obey the law. But if you break the law, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. So, if those who are uncircumcised keep the requirements of the law, will not their uncircumcision be regarded as circumcision? Then those who are physically uncircumcised, but keep the law, will condemn you, that of the written code and circumcision, but break the law. For a person is not a Jew, who is one outwardly, nor is true circumcision something external and physical. Rather, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly, and real circumcision is a matter of the heart, which is spiritual and not literal. Such a person receives praise not from others, but from God. Here ends our second reading. The Magnificat You have filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, 
my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You have filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. So let us pray. So this evening, as we gather together to pray, we continue to remember Petrock, who we commemorate today praying for the churches dedicated to him, especially in Cornwall. For that county, for those who are suffering from the lack of tourism in that area, for those who are missing their holidays there. We give thanks for his encouragement to make people of prayer in his time. And we pray that in our own generation, we too may be people of prayer, that we are given strength to pray, even when it seems difficult. We thank you that we have the opportunities to meet together for prayer. And that you, Lord, are always more ready to hear than we are to pray. So we give thanks for this day for all it has brought us, for the work we've done and the rest and relaxation we may have enjoyed, the conversations that we've held with others on the phone, via social media or through email. We thank you, Lord, for the technology we have today, which helps us keep in touch with people across the country and across our world. From our prayer intention today, we pray and give thanks for all those key workers who help to keep day-to-day -day life running, from those who deliver post and food to those who enable the delivery of medicines and other vital supplies to our communities. We thank you, Lord, especially for all those people who work behind the scenes, those who've often felt forgotten in our society, but have such essential roles and jobs that we would not be able to manage without them. We pray for those who felt invisible, that they may know their appreciation, the appreciation that we have for them and for the work that they do. We pray for our key workers who are working on the front line in the battle against coronavirus, for those working in the hospitals and hospices, in care homes and in people's homes. We pray for those who are using their medical skill to create vaccines and to work out tests. We thank you, Lord, for the gifts that you give to each one of them, that they are able to use these skills in the service of all others. We pray for those across the world who are coming together, who are working together in the face of this pandemic. We pray for those who go out to work and for those, for those who work from home. We pray for those who are furloughed at this time, for those who are preparing to opening, open up their businesses once again, and also for those who've lost their employment or whose employment is under threat of redundancy at this time. Lord, there is so much uncertainty and we pray that you give people your peace 
your comfort and your strength to face whatever the future may bring. We continue to pray for our schools, for our young people, for those being homeschooled at this time, for parents who are facing that challenge and opportunity, as well as for those within our schools working out how they may open safely for young people next week. We continue to pray, Lord, for your peace in the world, especially in America, where there has been so much protest, and also in this country and across our world. We pray, Lord, help us to remember that we are all made equal in your sight and that we are made in your image and that there should be an end to those things that divide us, that cause some to look down upon others. We pray, Lord, for a building up of your people, for a building up of reconciliation one with another and an end to violence caused by one person's perception of difference. And so we bring before you, Lord, those who are unwell at this time, those who are in need of your healing touch. We pray for many who suffer in body, mind or spirit. And amongst those that we name before you, Lord, we pray for Bridget, for Ian, John, Charlie, Wendy, Lisa, Morris and Margaret. We pray for those who have recovered from ill health, from those who've been able to return home from hospital. We give you thanks, Lord, for your healing touch upon them and ask for your strength to be with all those who care for those who are unwell today. And so we pray for those who have died, for those who've died this past day, and those we remember in our hearts and minds, giving thanks for their lives and for their inspiration to us. We pray for those we remember and those we give thanks for. We ask, Lord, for your courage and strength to surround all those who mourn, all those who carry that pain of bereavement, all those who feel fragile at this time. Lord, you are the God of compassion. And we pray that you show your compassion to all your children in need. O Lord, from whom all good things come, grant to us your humble servants, that by your holy inspiration we may think those things that are good, and by your merciful guiding may perform the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for this service of evening prayer. And you may find it hard to believe, but there is actually a Saint Fleur, um, an elderly clergyman from this diocese who sadly passed away earlier on in the year always used to ring me up on St Flair's day and have a chat to me about it. I don't think she was the patron saint of mice, but you never know, really. I think it's Julian of Norwich who is always pictured with a cat, so um, perhaps I ought to be warier when we have Julian of Norwich's day. Anyway, I do hope that you have a good evening, whatever this evening brings you that you stay safe and keep well and look after yourselves. You remain as always in my prayers and our services tomorrow are as usual at nine o'clock and five o'clock if you are able to join me for either 
or both of those services. In the meantime, do stay safe and do take care.